Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to day three of Singapore Geospatial Week Plus. We are pleased to have you join us today. And today we have um, CEO of Graphico, Go Siok Mei, who is, this, uh, who is a Geoworks Geotech as well, to talk to us about digital twins. Over to you, Siok Mei. Hi. Um, hi, this is Mei. I am trying to start my video. Hi everyone, this is me. Uh, let me share my screen and start this up. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me? I'm uh, assuming everybody can hear me well. Yes. Okay, today I am going to talk about, um, basically has anybody read this book, Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities by the Modern Library. Today what I'm going to um, story tell is a tale of three cities that we are working with uh, in the innovation sector. So in my innovation library, uh, tale of three cities. Objectives for today is uh, we would like to understand why cities are important, why United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are important, and then share use case of um, how the three cities are using this in combination um, to achieve their uh, SDG goals. A little bit on history, uh, World Urbanization uh, Report in 2018 by United Nations states that 60% of the world population will live in cities by 2030. And out of this um, 60%, 95% um, will actually be in the developing world, which is in the area that we are living in today, Southeast Asia. And cities occupy just 3% of the Earth's land, but account for a lot more in terms of energy consumption and carbon emissions and all that. So what does this mean actually? This means that with the population moving to cities, cities now have got issues and challenges that they have to deal with. Um, in terms of um, having built new cities, they have to also maintain the old. Uh, having more people moving or migrating into the cities, they have to also think about um, waste that comes with the people. They have to look at uh, traffic and traffic con congestion, uh, pollution, uh, as well as in Southeast Asia, we are also wrecked with tsunamis, floods, um, typhoons, and earthquakes. So on top of people moving into cities and the challenges that cities have today, we also have to deal with the natural disasters in this region. So what does this mean? And what do we do with it? What can the cities do with all of this? So a little bit about the history. Uh, in the year 2000, it was a new declaration set for global goals for the whole country, not just the country, the whole world, what we call Millennium Development Goals. So in the year 2000, eight basically objectives or key performance indicators uh, were set globally. Basically, no hunger, um, good education, equality of the people, and so on and so forth. By the year 2012, um, we have decided that, you know, actually aid is not sufficient. So 192 countries became members of the United Nations and decided to put all their thoughts and their thinking process together to come up with what we want to have now, a sustainable world, as in the future that we would like to live in. And by 2015, all these 193 countries by then agreed on these 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And what does Sustainable Development Goal mean? Basically, this is a framework and a blueprint to achieve a sustainable and resilient future for all of us. So from the eight MDGs, they, there is now 17 uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. I won't read through all of them, but uh, for example, one is no poverty, no hunger, and well-being for everybody, quality education, and so on and so forth. But what I will focus on today is SDG 11 because uh, we are living in cities and um, this is important to us. So for example, recently, I'll just pick up one area. 
Over 90% of COVID cases are all in urban areas. Uh, why is SDG um, 11 important? SDG 11 is to make all cities inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Uh, and Grafico as a company, we are now a partner to United Nations via Organization for International Economic Relations, which means we offer our platform, our digital twin photogrammetry platform as a base for United Nations KPIs to be visualized. That's what it means. Now, closer to home, a report that is done by McKinsey, five out of 10 Southeast Asia countries have got more than 50% of the population living in cities. So all the ones that I've highlighted in these red boxes have got most of their people living in cities. And according to Asian Development Bank report in 2018, we are also hit by natural disasters, flood, tsunami, earthquake, fire, typhoons. And in the last 15 years, the losses from just Thailand, Indonesia and Philippines alone amount to USD $59 billion. So that's many billions of dollars that is impacted in this region. So where am I going with this? This is to share with you now the three case studies that we have and how this is impacted when it comes to cities and when it comes to disaster. So the first one, I will cover a case study that we did in uh, Petaling Jaya in Malaysia. And this one touches upon SDG 11 KPI 1, which is housing um, and affordable housing, basically. Second one is looking at disaster um, my case study too is actually Kawayan City, a small city in Philippines. Um, don't listen to me, you have to listen to the mayor himself talking about this and how it impacts Kawayan City in the last um, couple of years. Plus, this touches upon SDG 11.5, which is adverse effect of natural disasters. And the third case study is looking at something more fun, <laughs> which is a Penang City. And this looks at SDG 11.4, which is culture and heritage. So this is what we envision for all our cities when we work with the United Nations, where they have a visualization of basically all types of information onto that one platform. So this is what we call a visual intelligence center where they can look at instead of just the graphs, they can look at the model of the city and then highlights and colors of the cities can come in. Uh, be it residential commercial area, be it uh, flood or landslide, uh, construction in progress, be it IoT sensors, um, energy consumption, and also integration to business application. And then at the same time, what we would like for this to do is for the cities to then be able to share the information with each other into department, as well as be able to disseminate that information out to the citizens. And this can be just via a mobile phone, uh, HTTP link, basically. So, first case study is actually Petaling Jaya. It's in uh, Malaysia. Administrative area of 97.2, about 100 kilometers square. We have taken using drones to capture the photographs. And from that photographs, we model it into a 3D digital tweet. And with that digital twin, we put it onto an open and a shareable platform. So 100 kilometers square, uh, you will have a look at the video later with a population of 600 over 1,000 and a total of 217,000 properties that we did this for. And this means they use it for tax assessment. So they look at tax assessment, they look at um, basically illegal settlements, they look at area that is very populated where people have uh, insufficient housing, and how to then relocate the people to better areas. Ooh. Oops. I will run through the, the video as well as uh, possibly talk through with this um, instead. Okay, this is what they call, their project is called a smart valuation map. And um, what we do here is we are looking at areas of all types from residential to commercial to infra to open spaces and land.
Yes, taking drones using the photograph, convert it into a digital twin, and then we layer multiple information on top from land information to the cadastral information, to um, the mapping information. Uh, we highlight the areas that is uh, needed. So for example, in this area alone, the base map, we use uh, Bing map, and the rest of it is actually a 3D photogrammetry map. Layer land information, as well as cadastral information. And then the information that you see on top is the information of the tax assessment that is given for the individual, um, basically, units or houses. At the same time, what we have put in is owner information. So for this particular house, what is the owner information in terms of plot of land, um, acre type of land, um, leasehold or freehold. Uh, with this, what they do is they can then do measurement of the areas. So they do measurement of the areas, they look at how big the area is, and uh, from there, they are able to estimate what type, depending on the type of land, what type of assessment uh, is to be charged to the citizens, basically. So from the citizens' perspective, the benefit is I would now know for this particular area um, where I want to develop or let's say build my new house, um, what is needed uh, in terms of uh, surrounding uh, infrastructure, in terms of how much I have to pay if I take this piece of land as opposed to I take another piece of land. So basically my house area, uh, building size, and then I can actually estimate basically how much I have to pay for tax. So this is used internally by uh, the whole of Pataling Jaya. I think there are about um, 60 over users that are using. Here we can color code. So this is what we call my our dashboard. We can actually color code the areas that have got higher uh, density or higher tax assessment uh, with this. What they've also done is they're looking at um, to be able to measure the height of buildings as well. Uh, and what they would like to do eventually is to look at maybe different types of building with uh, different height and different size to have a different uh, assessment rate. Okay, measurement in terms of um, not just height, we can of course measure length and of course uh, different types of length. It's not just a straight line. Um, this is actually them measuring a river that is next to a condominium block. Okay. The second one is actually um, City of Kawayan. City of Kawayan has a larger administrative area. They are 343 kilometers square, but it's a very small population of only about 140,000. Uh, city of Kawayan is actually an agricultural uh, city. And why we are very proud of this city is because uh, during circuit breaker in uh, April, uh, they had an expected um, news that they will be hit by typhoon. In 2019, uh, this city itself actually had seven typhoons and the seven typhoons amounting to losses of 453,000 USD. And can you imagine having these losses every year, year on year? So in April, they had um, a news that they are going to be hit by typhoon. And they wanted to actually have a model of their city so that they can plan ahead before typhoon hits them. So what we did was, um, we actually helped them uh, by teaching them on how to fly the drone to capture the photos. And from there, they upload the photos onto a cloud drive. We picked it up from the cloud drive, we model it for them, and we offer it on the platform for them to use. So the advantage is basically, they do not need to have us travel there to actually capture for them. At the same time, we are teaching them a new skill. So we are very proud because this is a very poor country that is technologically not very advanced. But with this, um, we feel that we have actually upskilled them. We have taught them a new, uh, something new that they can learn. And at the same time, the cities themselves are hiring their own people to do this. So in that sense, the city is actually becoming more sustainable by having their own people creating more jobs for them to do new skills. And they are so proud that they wanted to actually now bring this to the other cities 
um, in uh, the smaller cities in the uh, Philippines. So I would like to share what Mayor Bernard. Mayor Bernard, um, we actually did an event uh, with United Nations on the 1st uh, of September. And um, this event, Mayor Bernard actually spoke uh, to the United Nations people as well, to people of Norway. We have people, um, Mayor from Norway as well speaking, and he is presenting. So I will let him talk. Is there sound? We can't hear any sound. I don't think the sound is enabled. Sorry? I don't think the sound is enabled. Maybe we can um, uh, go to the Q&A right now. Okay. Sure. So if anyone has any questions, please place them in the Q&A section. Uh, the sound is okay. I've just enabled it. Sorry. You have it? Okay. Do you want to start playing? I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's running. So maybe we just go straight to Q&A. Mm, okay, sure. All right, uh, could you also share with the audience um, what does Graphico actually specialize in? Do you own proprietary software or what kind of tools do you use to enable the uh, projects that you're enabling? Yes, uh, oh, a couple of questions there. Number one is, is this a proprietary software? Um, it, it was developed on an open source platform. Um, so op developed on open source. It is uh, a software that we develop ourselves. We are Geotech, of course. And um, what we aim to do is to actually provide this as a easy and shareable platform for our customers and for the cities. The second question is, how do we do this, right? Uh, we model as in we take photographs whether uh, via helicopter or drone or even on the ground photos. And with a technique that we have developed on how we take the photographs, on how we take the photographs, we can actually model it onto um, a digital twin. Sorry, so a question from Budi, can we grab the existing model to combine with BIM model in BIM software like Autodesk, Revit or Navis work? Uh, selected software, yes. So all those software where it is on an OBJ format or if it's a GLTF format, yes, we can take it on. We have done that. Um, we are also working with um, URA basically to have some of the models uh, placed onto our platform. So our platform is different from a BIM platform. The BIM platform is still needed, very needed. In fact, when it comes to like uh, urban simulation and planning, once all that is done and let's say you uh, uh, a company or let's say a developer or city who would like to share that with their developers or their architects, then they place it on our platform. So our platform is a lighter version where then we can open up for, for people to access and to look at it. Yeah. So a question from Srinivas, is the solution completely graphical? So is there a third party integration, for example, like S3? Uh, so far it's all ours, but what we are doing is we're having many APIs, little APIs that is opening up so that people can prompt their application on top. So I have a question, how was it like for you to um, actually help to handhold the, the, your clients from developing countries? Like how do you actually introduce digital twins to them, the concept? Are they aware of the concept? Did they seek you out or did you actually knock on their doors and say, hey, this is a potential solution that you can actually consider? For disaster mm -hmm. mitigation and city planning. Yeah. So how we work is uh, there's two two ways on how we go about it. Uh, firstly, is via the product or the technology approach where we talk about you know this is a new thing um, because of COVID uh, as well. Wouldn't it be nice to have let's say a digital twin of your whole city? 
So most of that will be thinking like, what do you mean by that? And then from a technology perspective, we approach from there and that's how we introduce them to this concept. So a uh, concept that is like, for example, for Kawayan is disaster, which means yeah, um, they want to have a model or a snapshot of their city today before disaster hit. And when disaster hit, they will want to see which of the areas that they can actually rebuild. And because they get hit by typhoon seven times a year, it is actually very painful for them to keep rebuilding over and over again. So they use our digital twin to do measurement. For example, by the banks of the river, they can measure the height of the river. And then because it's 3D, they can measure as well the slope and the terrain and you know which houses is going to be impacted first, who are the people that they can save first. Plus, they can also measure in terms of crop and the crop destruction. So when it floods, then they will know that, oh, this size of land, which means that this cornfield is affected and this cornfield is affected, who's the owner of the land? And from there, how do we then help them to actually rebuild that part? Kawayan City is the largest corn and rice uh, producer from the Isabella state for Philippines. So they are very agriculture and they are very poor. So from a technology perspective, that's one way of how we go about uh, talking to them. And the second one is looking at SDG. Because Grafico is a partner to United Nations for SDG 11, which is making cities and communities sustainable, resilient, inclusive and safe. <laughs> that's a very long one. <laughs> um, what we do is we also look at cities who are probably not as um, small as Kauaian, but slightly bigger, but who would like to go towards a more sustainable and resilient future. And with that, we introduced to them United for Smart Sustainable Cities program, where we then bring the city towards, working towards their KPIs for SDG 11. So there's two prongs of how we go about when we talk to uh, cities or to developers, basically. Would that be the business model of Grafico to um, target this kind of projects where it's related to more sustainable goals, yes. KPIs? Something close to my heart. That's great. I, I, have, work. I have always wanted to have a company that is not just purely technology. It has to be technology plus helping people or helping the planet or somewhere along that line. So, so basically, if, if I can combine the two, then that's ideal. Perfect. But when we talk about um, uh, high-end technology um, for deployment in cities, um, mm -hmm. people will think like um, it's really costly. So how are you ma managed to help the clients to overcome the cost factor? Ah, cost factor. That's very interesting. Uh, we are actually very reasonable. Um, like for Kawaiian, for instance, um, we teach them how to do the fly and to do the capture. And with that, they upload onto a drive somewhere on the cloud. All we have to do is to pick up that information and then process it for them and then have it on the cloud where they can access it. So that becomes very reasonable because it's, it's not our skill to, to do it. It's not our time. Basically, it's their own time and we actually teach them how to do it. So from that perspective, um, in terms of cost for us as well, it's better because we don't have to have a big human resources cost. We work with the cities where they can have that. Secondly is in terms of cost, what we would like to do is also to create startups and little entrepreneurs who maybe can have businesses like this themselves. So we partner with all these little ones that can go and do the capture um, themselves and up, just upload it onto a web. And then the other cost, of course, is we can run either on-premise on their own hardware or we can run on any cloud of their choice. So if we have our own cloud, which is in our own data center, but we can run on Azure, uh, Amazon, basically, any cloud that it doesn't matter. Yeah. We have a question from Joseph Aoyong. Is this a stereo image 3D? <laughs> so creator? many questions! <laughs> and how does it compare with the others? Is this a stereo image 3D creator? Um, stereo image, I don't understand that. What is a stereo image 3D creator? No, we take photos. So basically, um, even from the iPhone, you can just go take photos. I can show you uh, one that we did for Heritage, where it's just using iPhones, we just go to the take the photos and then from there we run it through a processing uh, machine that we have that's our IP and from there we model it into a 3D. There's a question from Martin. Any insurance company approach for your model solution for disaster aftermath and evaluation? Yes, we have spoken to uh, insurance like companies but what they would like to do is also to have the 
predictive part of it which we have not done. So we are working uh, towards an AI model as well. Uh, too bad we can't hear the Kawaiian city, but the mayor is talking about his crop and how his crop is sustainable, basically. So if let's say we, we have photographs of the, the, the cornfields and we see that this part of the cornfield is turning brown, then we can work an AI where we can recognize the color change over time and with that build an AI model. So insurance company, what they would like to have is similar to what Kawaiian has, um, but uh, what they would like to also incorporate in is the predictive part, like you know, in year 2018, uh, 2028, a disaster will hit and what is the, the losses. That we, we, we won't be able to know unless we collect this over time. So the advantage of this is also we are able to collect snapshots of this over time, which is what we are building with Kawaiian for the future. We, they have taken one snapshot, which is uh, in April this year. And every six months or a year, they will then update. So they will fly again and update that set. So what then we will have is like a time lapse of uh, the models. So we can look at, okay, Kawaiian May 2020, 2021, 22, 23, and see how the city is being built over time. So that when we look at how, when a typhoon hit, what is the impact? So as they build over time, over the years, and when a typhoon hit, what is the impact? What is the cost? And then we can talk to the insurance agent. Thank you, Siu. Do you have any oh, that, last, That's a very um, long thing here. Do you have any last <laughs> thoughts to share with the audience? No, you can ask me anything. Actually, I prefer this. Please ask me a lot of things. I didn't manage to show a lot of stuff, but you know, uh, you can contact me and I'm more than happy to share a lot more. All right. Uh, well, you can contact us at joeworks at sla.gov.sg um, if you have any more questions for Silk May and we will share it, forward your emails to her. Uh, please do check out the other webinars today and we have the S3 user conference tomorrow and the open house on Friday. Thanks for joining us and see you again soon. Thank you.